Hey, Boulder Man here, and I've shown you a lot of videos where I'm critiquing the students in my class. I'm showing you what mistakes they're making. I show you how I correct their mistakes. But today, I'm going to do something completely different. I'm going to have Chris Paris. He's going to critique my riding. This is, of course, on a racetrack at high speeds where I'm not an expert. And I'm going to then show you a video where I try to implement what he told me, and I'll show you the mistakes. I'll critique my own video. I'll show you the mistakes I made while trying to implement these particular techniques. So come on, make sure you watch it to the end. Looks like you're starting to get things moving around a little bit more, feel a little bit like you're getting the head in there. Yes. Yeah, it seems like you're starting to move a lot more than you were uh, yesterday, so that's a good sign. Are you using the rear brake on this as well? Uh, just a little bit. Okay, I was gonna say, on this long wheelbase bike, feel free to use it. There's a couple times where you're almost like, it's hard to get it all, all this weight stopped with just the front brake on these long wheelbase bikes. So if you need some rear on this thing at your skill set, by all means, bring it on in there. Just make sure we're getting the bike down here by any means necessary means front and rear brake if we can't slow it enough with the front. A couple times it just seemed like apex was here and you get thrown out a little bit wide. So just let it slow a little bit more initially. Think about as you're tipping in, really trying to bend this inside elbow now. You're gonna really start leading a little bit more with the upper body. I think that's gonna be, we look just a little bit stiff in the handlebar. So you're trying to get your head from here to here. If we bend it, you'll really be able to start getting that chest and everything else moving in there and take away a lot more lean angle. So really work getting that arm bent a little bit more. We'll get that head moving. I'll have you follow me out. We'll do our change right here. Right. Let me ask you. In this section of the video, I'm following Chris and he's showing me the proper line and I'm trying to make sure that I take the exact line he takes. Speed is not a concern here for me. And I can tell you that the most difficult thing for me is, as he was saying, to get not just my head and eyes looking through the turn, but to get my body way over to the low side. Because everything we do at low speeds is the exact opposite. You need to get your body and your weight over to the high side. But here, the, the point of this is getting your body over to that low side is you're actually pushing the handlebars up so you're using less lean angle. The less lean angle you use, the quicker that you can go through the corner. Welcome to uh, Body Position here at Champ University. It's a subject you hear a lot about, a lot of different opinions on it. What's the main reason for moving our body, CP? Carry less lean angle. Mark, we'll have a, a student say, boy, I love being on the, uh, my left hand corners, but I'm not moving very well to my right hand corners. And sometimes it comes down to a specific issue. What is it? it? As simple as the way I put my hands to the handlebars, if we think about pointing our finger, our pointer finger toward the outside of the corner, and it straightens my wrist. Yeah, our turning rate is totally affected by the rate in which we move that upper body and the weight arriving in that foot peg, so. Body position. Lots of opinions out there. Let's do what the best in the world do. Let's move our body to run less lean angle. Less lean angle allows more throttle points, more brake points. You can be faster, safer by maximizing body position. While hitting the apex perfectly out on a racetrack is very important. It allows you to carry the most amount of speed. What you're basically doing is trying to straighten out the curves as much as possible. Now, of course, out on the street, hitting the apex exactly, well, you may not even know where the apex of a turn is if you're on an unfamiliar road, and you're better off hitting a late apex out on the street because it'll give you a better view around the curve. Here on the racetrack, we know that there's no oncoming traffic. There's nobody going to pull out in front of you. There's not going to be a, a deer running out or a branch on the road. Plus, as you can see, these turns are wide open and you could actually see very far through the curve. In fact, almost all the way through the curve as you're going around it. So here you want to hit the A-pass exactly, take the, the, the race line through the track, but out on the street, you gotta use a little bit of common sense. It's not a racetrack, there could be cars pulling out in front of you, it could be any one of a dozen things that are going on. So the techniques are gonna be the same, though I wouldn't be trying to get a knee down on the street, you're gonna attract a lot of attention probably from the cops. But getting your body over, using uh, the least amount of lean angle as you can, all those things will help you out out on the street and that's why i took this course well worth it you've got professional instructors race winners these guys know exactly what they're talking about after receiving those instructions and taking a lap showing the exact proper line with chris i'm now doing this on my own i'll take a complete lap here 
and my goal here is to get much more aggressive and to use the techniques to the maximum, at least the maximum for me. So I'm accelerating harder, I'm carrying more speed up to the turn, and that's one of the things I see here is I actually could have gone faster and started braking a little bit later and maybe held my brakes a little bit longer as I went through the curve. Once again, if you're not familiar with trail braking, that's what we're using here. Mainly it's the front brake, putting a little bit of pressure on the front brake as you enter the curve. And then if you need to slow down more, a little bit more pressure, we're squeezing that front brake. I'm also using a little bit of rear brake here as well to help slow the motorcycle down. But the point is, when you're trail braking, is to get that fork to dive so that you have most amount of traction on that front tire. As they've said at Champ School over and over again, your front tire will take a tremendous load. What it won't take is an abrupt load. So you don't want to snatch or stomp on those brakes. It's a squeeze, and it just takes a fraction of a second to do it. I noticed right there, I actually scraped the, the pegs, and I think I'd do it again here, which uh, had I leaned my body further off and pushed the bars up a little bit more, I wouldn't have had to be scraping the pegs or the, the floorboards. I also noticed in this video that I'm using too many gears. I think uh, at times I'm going up to fifth gear on the straightaway. I should have just stayed in fourth gear because you got a downshift to get to the corner. And using braking with the front brake plus downshifting at the same time, yeah, it, it takes quite a bit of practice. So if I had to, to do this over again, yeah, I would have been a little bit more aggressive, especially with my speed. Coming down this straightaway, I, I think I remember seeing the speedometer hitting somewhere around 85 miles an hour. I could have got over 100 miles an hour, stayed in fourth gear, downshifted at this point to third, and kept it in third as I went through this curve. But instead, I got down to, uh, I believe, second gear, which I really didn't need. Now, the more times you do this, the better, like anything else, the better you're going to get at it as long as you're using the correct techniques. If you're doing it all wrong and you do it all wrong over and over again, you just get good at being a bad rider. <laughs>